Hey guys, today we're talking about Make Human. This is a completely free and open source program that you can use for making uh, characters, uh, male or female, old or young. Pretty realistic, but not, you know, you're not going to be making any feature films out of this, but it's pretty good looking. So let's take a look. First, we start off, this is the, the way the screen starts when you load it. And we're on the modeling tab and the main tab section under there. And we have a number of sliders and we can adjust the gender to be more male or more female. And you can also see some of these, uh, when you change some of these down underneath, you can see that it's more female, the age, uh, muscle, weight, etc. Uh, so let's adjust some more of these. We can adjust the age. Now she's 49 years old. Let's make her a little bit younger, say about 30. And let's give her a little bit more muscle. So, uh, I don't want to be like a bodybuilder or anything, but let's you know, be a, make her a little fit. Maybe add a little bit of weight that might help with the muscle. And we'll make her a little taller. You can see down here the height is 70.17 inches now. And you can adjust the proportions a little bit. That gives a little bit more of a V shape, but you don't want to go too crazy with that. And then down here we can adjust the race uh, between African, Asian, and Caucasian. And you can see when you adjust one, the others slide down. So this is more African, this one's a little bit more Caucasian, and then more Asian. And you can have a little bit of a mix between them. So if I wanted you know, something like that, then I can do that. Okay, I'll say half Asian, half Caucasian. So let's zoom in a little bit with the mouse wheel. And if I use the middle mouse button, I can pan around, although that tends to zoom a little bit, I see. All right, noticed. But yeah, so let's move on to the next tab here. We have the gender tab, which tends to be mostly uh, about the breasts on this one. And then there's another category here for the genitals, which we'll not cover for keeping this family friendly. And so we can adjust the breast size a little bit. There's a ton of options for it. Yeah, we can go a little bit bigger, we can go a little firmer. Then you can adjust the vertical position, higher or lower, and how spread apart they are. There's a lot of details in there. So, okay, let's move on to the face. And we can rotate around just by clicking and dragging or in the top of the viewport here, we can click these to go to different angles. Now they're orthographic views, but let's look at it this way. And so, you can see we have the age of the face, so we can go really old and get a little more definition, like wrinkles, or very young, and it's kind of childlike. Let's keep it you know, just above the middle a little bit. And so we have all these different shapes of the face. So I'm going to go a little bit more diamond shaped maybe. And kind of inverted triangle. So we get a little bit more of a pointed chin. I think that looks nice. And then if you look again at the categories, you have a ton of these categories for the head size, the forehead, and neck, and the individual eyes left and right, the nose size, all kinds of details in there. Let's zoom in a little bit, the mouse wheel. And so let's, uh, let's play with some of these. Uh, can give her a longer nose, maybe, or shorter, like a you know, button nose. That's that's looking really flat, very strange looking. But 
if that's what you're going for, maybe you're making some kind of alien creature or something, maybe that'll help. Okay, and then of course we have mouth size. And so I'm using the uh, nightly build of Make Human. So some sometimes uh, you may not see all of these pictures in position, such as on the gender tab here, we're missing a couple of these, but those will be added. All right, so let's go back here. And you can adjust the ears if you want. But I'm just going to move on. So let's look at the torso. And we can make some adjustments there. We'll scale the, the depth of it a little bit. And we can adjust the cone shape and the, the dorsal muscles to get a little bit more of that superhero look. Yeah. Again, you don't want her to be too muscular or she may look manly. But we can adjust the arms and legs and again we have the categories on the right for the right hand, left hand, right foot, left foot, etc. And Lots of details in there to adjust the finger lengths and hand positions, stuff like that. And so let's look at the right arm. We can adjust some of the muscles. Here's the lower arm muscles. You can see it adjusting in here. And the upper arm thickness. Can adjust that a little bit. But, uh, Really looking for the upper arm muscles right here. Build that up. And go all the way. That's a little better. And the upper arm skinny or fat. That helps to build the muscle up a little bit. And we can do some of the same thing with the left arm. So you can see you can really get a whole lot of detail and very specific if you want to. off a little bit and so if you want to help uh, with some of these uh, muscles in the, the shape you can see if we click the, for the wireframe you can see it's not really made for having like stomach muscles or anything like that so let's turn off the wireframe and we can come over real quick to this geometries tab and look at the topologies under there and we can use female muscle and that really helps to define some of the shape but of course if you're going to put some clothing on the character then you know some of these details may not even matter that much but, so yeah let's move on uh, you can do adjust the muscles for the legs if you want and there's the legs in general if we slide this up see we can just adjust the the height of the legs and so that's pretty much everything for modeling there's some custom stuff you can set up I guess and and you can measure uh, to get the length of everything if you need to be really specific uh, so let's move on to geometries and so first tab here we have some clothes and the uh, official release doesn't really have a very good selection, uh, but the nightly builds have a little bit better options here. And here we have both male and female. So let's filter it by female. And so we have some clothing options here. For, it's called female casual suit. Female casual suit two with the shorts. And here an elegant suit, kind of a skirt and a business top. And this one I think <laughs> this looks a little bit too short there. 
but hey, if that's what you want. So it's, uh, oops, and you do have to click it a second time to turn it off before you pick another one. So let's move on. We have eyes. So you can choose the type of eyes that you want to use, high poly or low poly or none. So if you're using a game character or making a game character, you can pick low poly. But this will be fine for now. And we have some hair options. Again, we can sort this, filter it by just female. And some of these are a little strange, <laughs> I think, but they're not too bad. This one looks nice. We have a long one, goes way down. This one with a ponytail. Another short one. Stick with a ponytail for now. And if your character is going to have teeth, you have several options there. Uh, we already looked at the Topologies tab. Uh, we have options for eyebrows. Zoom in. A whole bunch of different selections there, different shapes, thicknesses. Let's just pick one, pick a kind of a standard looking one. Okay, and we have eyelashes, of course, too. So if we zoom way in, we can see those. And they don't really look, most of them don't look a whole lot different. This one's really long. Uh, they're slightly different. And so let's move on. We have a tongue. Uh, if you need a tongue, you can include that. And let's move on to materials. And here we have some different types of skin. So let's say if you want to do middle age Asian female, we have that one. And here we have the young. Caucasian female, which is not a whole lot different, but let's stick with that one. And then, oh, there are also some of these uh, that are work better without clothing, but it really helps, uh, I guess, if you want to get a look at how things are laid out. But let's go back to the go back to the middle age Asian female. There it is. And so on the next tab we have Pose and Animate. And so this first thing you see, it looks like the character is transparent, but that's because it's for the rigs. And you can look at the, how the different rigs look. We have this CMU MV is for doing uh, motion capture. Uh, we have the default one. We have the, let's zoom in here, we have the, this one has toes, so we have default with no toes. And then we have a simpler one for game engines. So let's stick with the default one. And we have some sample poses in here too. So this is this no pose. Uh, we have a benchmark pose which looks silly, but you can look at it to see if there's any st weird stretching or hear the, like, the skin poking through the shirt like that, so you know things that you may have to fix later. So then we have some fight poses, just to see how it looks, I guess. Looks, looks more like flying to me. <laughs> Another fight pose. And a bunch of these, but if you're working on an uh, architectural visualization, I find these standing poses might be useful. You could, if you just need to have a bunch of characters quickly thrown in the background. So we've got some more simple standing pose. This one kind of in the middle of a step. Yeah, and then down below we have a T pose if you're going to be doing some mocap. Uh, 
yeah, and then we have some rendering options, which I haven't really played with a whole lot. Because uh, I'm not really crazy about how they come out, but... Uh, oops, let's go back to none pose. Um, but you can render it, and I don't really see the purpose in this. But you can go back here, there are some other settings and utilities. I don't really pay much attention to this stuff. But so then you can actually come in and export your model just like it is, as like an FBX, for example. We have FBX, Object, OBJ, uh, Collada. Uh, I use Lightwave 3D and I find that the FBX works best because it includes the uh, skeleton nicely. And so that's pretty much covers the whole thing and uh, of course, you can also make a male character pretty easily, too. So very quickly, I wanted to show uh, how we set this up in Lightwave after we've exported. So I'm setting this up using the game engine skeleton. And then over here in Lightwave, I've saved it out as an FBX, a test girl I called it. So I'll just double click that. And take a few seconds to load. Here's the FBX importer. Just use bake rotations and light wave joints. And it loads it up. And there she is. Let's move this down. And we'll zoom in a little. And so there's a few things we need to do. First thing, I want to grab the root bone. And currently it's parented to a null called Game Engine, which is the skeleton. And so let's collapse that. And so I'm going to grab that root bone. And instead of Game Engine null, I want to drag it down to this female muscle thing, which may be a little bit different depending on your character. But that's the name of the actual object character. And then there are other objects for the clothing, the shoes, the eyelashes, etc. So let's drag that root down to female muscle. And so now it's parented to the actual character. And then we can actually just clear that game engine one, and just delete that. So next up, all of these bones are here, but they're not activated. we look at the properties for the bone, you can see uh, active, bone active is not checked. So all you can do is quickly scroll, click, select the first one, scroll down, and shift click to select all of them, and then press R, which will rest the bones as well as make them all active. So there we go, so that's done. And next up, so now we can actually test and see what's going on with them. If we click one of the joints in between, press Y to rotate. And as you move it around, you can see the bone is moving, but the clothing is not. So let's undo that. And next thing, you can come down to all of these clothing items, even the ponytail. Let's uh, collapse that. And so let's take that, and while that object is selected, I'm gonna press Shift-B 
to switch to bones mode and then hit properties and you can see here it says use bones from object and the default is self but we're going to change that to the female muscle thing since that's where all the bones are and then so we'll select the next one and do the same thing and just do that with all of them and there we go so that's easily done we can close that and so now if we try to switch back to bones mode shift B so now if we click that joint and we move it you can see the clothing moves with it and we can try with a leg as well there it goes and you can see there's a little bit of stretching in there and see, even if we go this way yeah, you can see there's some stretching in there. It's just because the bones are not uh, using the weight map correctly. So you might want to you know, play with the properties for the bones. In fact, currently it's not even using the weight map. It's using just the regular light wave bones. So you might want to switch it to switch them all to the proper weight maps. And even then, you might want to blur some of the maps around uh, around the hips, etc. But so that's how you basically set it up in Lightwave and get you going. Now you're ready to go. All right. So again, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, uh, if you learned something, share your characters in the comments. Show us what you made, and uh, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe. And thanks for watching.